In this trite exercise, we're given equations and we're asked to determine whether each of them is a function. And remember, a relation is a function or an equation represents a function when for each input, there's only one output. For each unique x value, there's only one y value. So with this first one, we have x and y both being taken to the first power. That's an indicator right off the bat that this is a line. Well, a line we know is a, a function because it doesn't take on multiple y values for every x value. If we graphed this, we could plot points. You know, if we plug in x equals 0, we get y equals negative 3. Uh, if we plug in x equals negative 1, uh, then that's going to be 1. And we have a line that goes through those two points. So that's a visual representation of that equation. And, and yet, as you can see, a line is a function. For every input, there's only one output. For every x value, there's only one y value. Now we can also go ahead and let's just solve for y. So if we subtract 4x from both sides, we get y equals negative 4x minus 3. We can see that represents a line with a slope of negative 4 and a y-intercept of negative 3, which is what we've graphed here, or sketched the graph of. It's not a proper graph, but it's a, a visual representation of it. We can also, as it does in your online lesson, in the examples you've seen thus far, uh, we can go ahead and just plug in a, an x value to see what it does. Let's say we plug in, you know, x equals 2. So at x equals 2, we have y equals negative 4 times 2 minus 3, which equals negative 11. And it would be the same with any x value that we put in. For any x value, we're going to multiply it by negative 4, and we're going to subtract negative 3. So that's not going to result in multiple y values for the same x value. So we can definitively say that this first example, it is a function. Now with our second equation, we're given x plus y squared equals 1. Uh, what your, uh, the example that you've seen in the, in the online lesson does is they go ahead and they, they skip down to this x equals and, and then say, oh, well, the nature is going to be the same for uh, any value that, that we plug in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, and this, this is something you should have seen most likely in Algebra 1 and Geometry. I'm going to solve for y. So if we subtract x from both sides, we get y squared equals negative x plus 1. Now right off the bat, we should tell that this is going to have a limited domain because uh, anything squared is going to be positive. So any value we put in for x, it has to yield a positive value when we add 1 to it. So this, nothing's going to be greater than uh, x equals 1. Because if x equals 1, then we end up with 0. And if x equals 2, then we end up with negative 1. Well, we can't square something and have it be a negative value. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, how this is represented is take the square root of both sides. And we end up with y equals plus or minus. Remember, when we take a square root, yeah, negative 2 or 2 squared is 4, but negative 2 is squared is also 4. So we have to look at the negative and positive square root. So that indicates no matter what we put in for x, as long as it's defined, we're going to end up with two values, a positive value and a negative value, which is indicating to us that this is not going to be a, a function. And if we had a visual representation of it, you would see that it's not going to be uh, a function. So we'll go ahead and now do what your your textbook does. We'll look at this this version of it. The y squared equals negative x plus one. Let's say x equals, and again we know it's not going to be uh, anything greater than than one. So let's say we have x equals negative one. Well, then when we plug into this y squared equals negative x plus 1. So y squared equals negative negative 1 plus 1. So y squared equals 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then when we take the square root of both sides, we'll get y equals 
plus or minus the square root of 2. And it's going to be similar as we saw with, as we should be able to see with this equation when we solve for y. When we put in an x value that, that works, we're going to end up with a positive value and a negative value. And it would be the same with any x value that we put in that, that ends up being defined, that yields a positive value on the right hand side of the equation. So there's two y values for every x value that, that we put in, and that tells us this is not a function. Now with problem C, we have y minus x squared equals 2. Let's go ahead and follow the same process I have up to this point, and we'll solve for y. So y equals, adding x squared to both sides, x squared plus 2. So for any value of x that we put in, we're going to square it and add 2. Uh, for example, let's say x equals 2 again. So y equals 2 squared plus 2 y equals 4 plus 2, which equals 6. And it's going to be the same for any x value that we put in there. We're going to end up with just one y value. And what we'll see later on is this represents a, a parabola. So a visual representation of it would be something like this. Uh, and any place on here that you have an input, you're only going to have one output, which again means the equation we're given is a function.